Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, jambo, bienvenidos. Hi, this is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, an iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award nominee. We are so delighted that you're part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Michael Coles. He is here to celebrate a really wonderful app that gives you a new way to experience reading with your kid. It's called Choose Your Reader. Before Michael joins us, we want to let you know we have a brand new Reading With Your Kids certified great read. The Last Surviving Dinosaur, the Tarantacrankosaurus by Stephen Joseph. We've been celebrating The Last Surviving Dinosaur for some time here on the show. Uh, They've been a regular part of the show. Stephen was a guest on the show and just recently submitted the book to our Certified Great Read program. We love The Last Surviving Dinosaur. It's a charming picture book written by Stephen Joseph and illustrated by Andy Case. Joseph has taken inspiration from Jewish culture and has introduced kids to certain Jewish words like Source, which means problems, and kvetch, which means complaining to, about your source. This story is inspired by Joseph's personal experience of how he learned to manage his own crankiness as a child. The last surviving dinosaur follows the story of one cranky dinosaur who survived and became human's oldest ancestor. She was called the Tarantacrankosaurus. There are a lot of reasons to love the last surviving dinosaur, the Tarantacrankosaurus. The thing that I love most of all is that I was at the Chicago Kids Expo back in the spring before the pandemic hit, and I met a a, a young girl, and she told me that she hated reading. She was 10, 11 years old. She said, I hate reading. I never read. And I said, take a look at this book. And she read it, and she laughed, and she had a great time. We know that your family will also have a great time reading The Last Surviving Dinosaur, The Tarantacrankosaurus by our friend Stephen Joseph, our latest Reading With Your Kids certified great read. Joining us right now from the beautiful state of North Carolina, he is here to celebrate a brand new app, a brand new way that we can share stories with our kids. Please welcome to the show the creator of Choose Your Reader, Michael Coles. Michael, how are you? Fantastic, fantastic. Thanks for having me. You know, this is um, a, a great innovation, I think. We've talked about a, a couple of apps, uh, a couple of story apps in the past, Um uh, tell us about Choose Your Reader. It's different than some of the apps that we've featured in the past. Yeah, it is a story time app that is designed to let you record your voice reading to a child, and then you can send that story digitally to the child. And And what's really cool about it is the child's experience with the story is very much like a traditional sit-down-and-read experience, meaning... They get pictures. They have the words in front of you. Uh, And then the kid also gets to see the words highlighted as you're reading the text. And so it also connects to literacy and and language building skills that are also important for kids. This is – I love this. I am much older than you. My kids are adults right now. I understood the – the, the, the value of reading uh, with our kids, you know, from the moment they I was reading to my son when he was in the womb. Um, but I, I travel. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, but I travel and I would be out on the road for four or five days at a time. Um, and I would miss reading to my son and my daughter. And I know they missed it, even though they had their and my wife w- was reading to them when I was away. It, it just wasn't the same. So I started recording, um, m- you know, uh, me reading the stories on cassette tapes and would leave them and my wife would play them. Um, but it wasn't, it didn't have that connection with the words and all of that other kind of stuff. This is really, really neat. Um, how did you, how were you inspired to um, create this app? Well, my experience is fairly similar to yours 
in that I have a son and I was reading to him at night, but I was also at the time going through a divorce and I wanted to be able to just make sure that that opportunity to read to him was available and that voice connection. And so I thought, gosh, there has to be this, this app out there somewhere that does this. And I looked and looked and there was nothing. And I just thought, you know, I probably could build that. And I took a shot at it. And Choose Your Reader is the result. Really cool. And now, you know, we were talking, you're an, an attorney, um, so I don't, I don't all automatically connect, um, a, a lawyer with, uh, a coder or developer. How did that happen? <laughs> that, that is very true. Uh, that is not, and I'm not a, an intellectual property lawyer or anything like that. So, uh, but what I am is fairly tech comfortable. I have always enjoyed implementing technology in my practice and I'm an early adopter by nature. And so even if you think back to landlines, I ditched the landline back in 1999. <laughs> so, you know, it, that for me has always been sort of the next step in the process is what I've been, I've been interested in. And so I've had like a smartphone, one of the earliest smartphones I had probably around 2001, 2002, just because I, I have always been that way. So uh, the, the tech side was fairly straightforward. Uh, the other piece to it is that building an app, I'm not a coder, so I didn't code the app by any means. But if you think about your use of an app, the way that they talk about it in the industry is they talk about user stories. And so what you try to do is tell the story of a user multiple times through multiple use cases. And that's what I do is tell stories. Mm -hmm. So for me, designing an app was not about zeros and ones from a digital concept. It was about stories of how people would enjoy something that I was trying to create. Fascinating. And, you know, anybody out there who's thinking, well, I don't always connect lawyers with storytelling. I do. <laughs> I know as an advocate, that's one of the things that, that, that you have to do is you have to go in and tell your client's story. So that makes perfect sense to me. Yep. That's exactly the way to think of it. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, oh, boy. I think a lot of people out there, you know, they, they're, we talk about necessity being the mother of invention and, and there's a lot of people out there that, that have needs, that have necessities, uh, that, that think up the idea, but they don't have the, the wherewithal to go out and, and make that happen. Um, I, you're an early adopter to technology. Are you also a, a, a born entrepreneur? Someone said, and, and I'll, I won't give them credit because I don't remember who, but uh, entrepreneurs aren't born, they are made. Uh -huh. And I was not an entrepreneur in the earliest days of my uh, legal career. You know, I started at a very large firm and pursued that path and figured I would stay there forever. And at some point, I reached this idea that there was a window of time in my life when I'm have the chance to start my own firm. I was I was unmarried, no kids. It was just, you know, a boy and his dog were the only responsibilities I had, right? When I think about me and, and my, my dog at the time. And so if this is the moment that I can take this huge risk and go for it. Um, and, and instead of thinking about it in terms of, well, now I'm established and I have all the money that I want and now I can take the actually I took the risk when I had the lowest expenses. Mm. That to me was the better risk window for me. So starting my own law firm in 2004, the entrepreneur bug must have crawled in one night and bitten me uh, because <laughs> uh, since then it has just been the kind of thing that, that happens in my brain. I see a situation, a problem. I tell a user story about it and, um, I'll tell you, Choose Your Reader is the product of seeing my ideas come to life when someone else did it for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And then Choose Your Reader was the moment where I said, 
no one is going to show me my idea on this one, right? No one else is going to come along and say, hey, I invented this great new app, that's how it works. And you know that moment. I mean, we've all had the moment where we say, I thought of that. <laughs> right? So yeah, I didn't invent the shallot spinner or whatever idea there is out there, but um, I didn't want to see a commercial or a billboard or get an email about an app that basically was choose your reader, and I had no impact in shaping and directing how this could really help other people in situations similar to mine or yours. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit more specifically uh, about the reader. So the, the, a, a, a person will go on to the Apple Store, the Google Play Store. They'll, uh, is there a cost to download the app? So the app is free. No cost to download. The first current model that we have is we have a, a two-week trial period. Um, what I am looking at exploring is I want to make sure people have a way to use it. So you get that opportunity for two weeks, and you just get your run of the place for right now. Um, you can check it out. You can record stories. You can send them by email, by text, by WhatsApp. Uh, we make that as easy as possible for you to be able to share stories and check it out. And then we've got a $50 annual fee if you decide you want to keep using it. And the cool part about that annual fee is it's important to me, right? I think about the user story of myself as a, a user. I don't enjoy that, like, every step of the way you get nickeled and dimed there. Mm -hmm. So the way I structured it, unlimited recording of stories, unlimited storage of stories, unlimited sending and receiving of stories – within that one annual fee. Wow, that's uh, that's a great deal. Now, you, you were talking about the stories, the the, word, the text lighting up for kids as they're listening to you record. So obviously there are some stories on the, the app itself that, that folks can read? That's right. So we've got 100 books in a total of five languages. And the idea, it started with initially, the, I wanted to be able to point at the word so that the kid learned the word and learned to read and phonics through the app. Uh, you know, it's, it's great to connect from a relationship standpoint, mm -hmm. but I also wanted that literacy and educational component. So we added that in, and it's, if you can imagine a karaoke style interface is mm -hmm. what I call it. So, the, the user as a reader, the words are highlighted and you can change the pace to make it a little slower, a little faster, but your reading synced to the highlighting. That same pace is then displayed to the child who is then able to hear your voice connected to the words that you've recorded. You know, as, as you were speaking about that, a thought flashed through my mind and, and it's really exciting for me. Um, my wife is has been a teacher for 33 years, and very oftentimes when we're allowed to get together with, with folks, not in pandemic times, uh, but, but the, you know the house would in the backyard would oft, oftentimes be filled with teachers and and um, mostly teachers in in the Boston public school setting. And I remember when I launched the podcast, I sat down with them and I said, "What kind of things can we do to motivate?" parents, your parents, the kids that, that you're teaching, those parents, uh, to read more with their, with their kids. And, uh, you know, they came up with some different ideas. But one of the things that they all pointed out to me is, Jedley, we have a, a lot of our parents can't read. A lot of our, of our parents can't read English or don't, aren't confident to read English. And a, a lot of our parents are, are working three or four jobs. That was it always sad to me that, you know, wow, the, there, there are there are a lot of parents out there that can't read uh, for whatever reason. This seems like um, a real blessing that if there is a parent out there that that can't read and they, they want to, uh, you know, get the benefits of reading with their kids, a family member could step up and and do this kind of reading, and then the mo mom or dad, who you know, the, the person who has trouble reading, can sit down and experience the book with their kids sitting on their lap. When you think about user stories, 
the user story, I'll, I'll tell you three of them quickly here that connect exactly to what you just described. So story one is one of those teachers that wants to be sure that the kids are reading. Teacher records the story once, gets the phone number or email address of the parents in the class, and can send that story 30 times to each student's parents. And then there's a feedback connection in the app that basically tells the sender every time the story's been heard. And so the teacher actually can say, I know Johnny heard the story, Susie heard the story, whoever it is, because I got the feedback that says, thanks for hearing, you know, thanks for sending me that story. So that's step one. Step two is you're talking about parents who may not be able to read English if they speak a language that is in the app. So take a Spanish-English situation. Mom speaks Spanish. We have the same story in English and in Spanish. So the teacher reads it in English. Mom reads the same story in Spanish, and you are creating a bilingual kid Mm. that is proficient right away. And then the third version of that, my my legal career involves a fair amount of immigration work, Mm -hmm. and I have a lot of clients who the kid does not speak the native language of the parent because the parent never really taught it. Mm-hmm. And now the child cannot really communicate with grandma or grandpa. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Well, imagine now the grandma or grandpa is reading in their native language back to the child the same story that mom, dad, teacher, whomever is reading in English. And so you're still creating that bilingual chi- bilingual child through that process. I mean, there's so many ways that this is educational beyond just the emotional connection and relationship building. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you're, I would love to have teachers using the app, and we did a pilot project with the school to make sure that that connected well. Um, so, yeah, teachers, feel free to reach out. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about doing another pilot project, particularly in the COVID environment, because this is a great way to get content out there uh, in a way that is also readily accessible for parents. This is fantastic. Now, you mentioned there are five, there's stories in five different languages. What are those languages? Yep. So we've got Spanish, French, Russian, Mandarin, and English. Uh, we are releasing later this year Hebrew and Arabic. And my goal is to hit 10 languages mm-hmm. and be able to have that for people so across the world. I mean, right now we're in 160 countries, but not everyone speaks English around the world. So mm-hmm. we want to make sure we've got uh, tremendous access across a variety of languages. And and I always love this idea of a polylingual society. It's a far more interesting and vibrant place to live. So hopefully we can do our part to create that. Absolutely. We, oh, boy, I... You know, my, my, my wife's originally from Puerto Rico, so I can get by in Spanish. And I love that I can get by in Spanish. I love that I have the confidence to go and try it and make mistakes, and it's okay. And But it just opens up doors when you travel to a different country. And it just, you know, there there's a lot of time, you know, being able to say hello to somebody in their native language, even if that's all you can do. It's such a great way to show respect. So I, I love that this has this. I'm, I'm wondering, Michael, is there a way for um, uh, 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 people who are a separated, a parent who's in Boston and the child is in North Carolina, is there a way for me to get on the app and read in real time uh, live with, with, the, with the child? So if you are separated, you can't do that, right? Okay. You cannot simultaneously record and sort of broadcast, mm-hmm. if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are physically with the child, absolutely you can record in that moment so that you can capture that moment and then have the child hold on to that uh, forever in theory. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that you can absolutely, absolutely do. And I, I'm, I'm imagining that if this would be real fun um, in a real way to, to empower kids if you're sitting down and you're reading the book to get recording a reading of the book together where the parent will record uh, one page and the child will record the second page 
and then that that can be something that that uh, parent and child can can listen to together and uh, what a boost of confidence a child can have hearing their voice read the story absolutely absolutely and and the other thing we're looking to do is basically once you've and and you probably know this right with your kids kids will age out of having the parent read to them for the most part Uh, the child will at that point want to read for himself or herself Mm mm-hmm that is not the end of the use, right? Now, the idea is grandma or grandpa read to you for five years. It's your turn. You should be reading to them. And so we're looking at adding more advanced content that is good for a kid to be able to read to improve their proficiency, uh, but at the same time, connecting with you know people near and far in order to sh- continue that relationship building. And the cool part is, If you hold on to that content, now you're going to read to your kid in, you know, 20, 30 years, but it'll be the 10 year old self or the 12 year old Mm -hmm. self reading back to now your five year old child. This is amazing. This is amazing. I, what you, you mentioned adding content. And I think you said you have a hundred books up on the app right now. Um, where we we have lots of authors who are listening to the show are are you looking for authors to submit absolutely we are we are we do a couple of different things here we hold some contests uh, for authors but we also take at submissions directly and you can go to our website uh, chooseyourreader.com and there's a submit page and basically the cool thing is If your work is not illustrated, we have a team of illustrators that are available. You basically look through our content and you say, I like this illustrator. We confirm that illustrator is available and they can work with you to illustrate your book. If it has been illustrated, we can get you moving a lot quicker, obviously. But the cool thing is, you know, you probably know the story, and I don't know how true it is, but the lore surrounding the whole Harry Potter franchise and all the rejection letters. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I learned in this process and talking to people in the publishing business is that the challenge is it takes twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars and about eighteen to twenty-four months to get one book on one shelf, mm-hmm. and because of that. The decision on what book they will or will not publish is a really difficult decision. Well, through this platform, again, I I told the user story of now I want to think about it as a publisher and an author. I created a platform that I can get a book from unillustrated manuscript to distribution in 160 countries in 45 days for about a thousand bucks. Wow. Wow. That's that's quite a difference. Yeah. yeah. So our willingness to take on content is wide open. Right. Um, and so we're, we're very interested in getting works out there because for us that risk analysis is very different. And we're just looking to put content because you know this as well. Getting a kid to read a book they love to begin is what gets them to continue loving the experience of reading for a, a lifetime. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, hey, I know folks are going to want to know. Uh, we mentioned that the app is available on the Apple Store and also the Google Play Store. But I, a lot of times, like me, I love to go online and, and, and check out a website and read what's, what's going on before I add something to my phone. So tell everybody where they can go online to, to learn more about Choose Your Reader. Yep, you can look for us on the web at chooseyourreader.com. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, So if you search Choose Your Reader, you'll find us there. And feel free to connect online, social media, happy to do that. And like I said, for the author out there, uh, certainly look for our contests online. But also be open to submitting your work directly outside of a contest if you're interested. And we'll talk about, you know, our review process and what it takes to get on the app. And most important thing there we never charge authors for getting content published. 
Uh, a lot of places will charge the author. That is a horrible business model from my standpoint. So you get paid. You do not pay us. Well, so much for folks to check out. A benefit, uh, like you were saying, telling different stories. What great stories we can tell uh, uh, about a kid using the, the app, about parents using the app, and authors. Michael, I am just so happy that we connected and that you had a chance to tell us about Choose Your Reader today. Uh, thanks so much. We've been talking with Michael Coles. Michael, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Brittany Plumeri. She will be here to celebrate how to cure a mind monster and Monsters Manners Lab. That's the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. You heard us celebrate the fact that Stephen Josephs, the last surviving dinosaur, the Tarantacrankosaurus, is our latest Reading With Your Kids certified great read. If you are an author looking for ways to help your book stand out from the crowd of books that are published every single month, we would love to invite you to visit our brand new website, CertifiedGreatReads.com tells you all about our Certified Great Reads program. If your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars in our panel's estimation, it becomes a Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read. And with that status comes a whole lot of really powerful tools that can help your book stand out and let parents know that your book is worthy of their consideration. Check it out today. The Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read Program. Learn all about it at CertifiedGreatReads.com. want to thank the folks who made today's show so very wonderful. Of course, we want to thank our guest, Michael Coles. Be sure to check out Choose Your Reader. also want to thank my team, starting with my amazing daughter, Alejandra Doherty, my fabulous producer, Fatima Khan, my awesome author, Ambassador Peggy Cotto, I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. But most of all, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.